Hey everybody, Mike Day here. Everything about concrete.com is the website. This is my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. If you're a return visitor, man, I really appreciate you guys coming back. If you're new to my channel, it's all about concrete stuff. So in today's video, we're actually doing a concrete patio. But we do concrete floors, we do stamp concrete, we do just about everything concrete that's flat. Now what we're doing is we're getting ready to pour this thing. We didn't have very good access as you can see so we're using a conveyor truck. That conveyor arm will reach about 40 feet so luckily this wasn't a very big house. Otherwise we would have had to pump this. And we did have to back him right inside the garage. We haven't poured the garage floor yet so that made it for pretty good access using this. It actually made the pour go really really easy using this. So uh, we're going to get this poured. Now what we're doing is it's 8 feet wide, it's 32 feet long. We did the forming here, we did the rebar. I put the ISO strip up against the, the foundation there. You can see that gray ISO strip, so we're pouring up against that. I got the slab bolsters in under the rebar, so that's holding that up into the concrete real good. We, you know, it's getting late in the season, it's pretty cold. The nights are getting below freezing now. You can see there's a little bit of steam coming off the concrete, so we got hot water in the concrete. We'll use a 4,000 PSI mix on all our exterior concrete. Sometimes we'll even use a 4,500 depending on what we're doing. And then it has air entrainment in it too. And the air just helps protect it against the freeze and thaw cycles it's going to go through. And then we'll also add some microfiber in it. So we, this stuff has fiber mesh in it along with some accelerator. Now it's it's right about the freezing mark right now at this point in the morning. Today, the day we're pouring this, it's gonna get up it's gonna get up probably about ten degrees above freezing. So we you know we had to make sure that we got this good and set up for the the next night to make sure it didn't freeze. And then uh, it'll be okay after that. Once it reaches five hundred psi, it's generally good to start going through some freeze and thaw cycles for uh, you know, just, just just a relatively benchmark type thing. Well, Luke's holding the boot right there. Darren's getting the edges magged. We're moving that poly around the floor because that, that conveyor throws just a little bit of, of cement paste when it runs. And we didn't want to mess that floor all up. So we're just trying to catch as much of that mess as possible. You can see we can pour a pretty good slump with this stuff. We got high range water reducer in it too. So it allows us to pour a, you know, a loose enough slump so it's pretty easy to work with. We don't want to pour too loose because this slopes away from the, that foundation in about an inch. So we don't want it to sag. But we want it to be easy enough to work with so we can move it around pretty good. Normally, you know, we'll have access on a house like this where we can back the concrete truck right to it and just use it out of the chute. But I don't know how many of you guys have access to a conveyor truck like this. If you do, let me know down in the comments if you do. If you don't, if you've never seen one, let me know that down there too. We actually, our company, the one we use, has two of these. So, it, it's, it's and they cost, you know, it is extra to get them. It's probably about... I think it's 25 bucks a yard extra they charge but for something like this to get it right where you need it you know this was about well I think this was five and a half yards down here and the garage we did was seven and a half yards but we only use this for the garage uh, the patio so for an extra hundred bucks I mean you really can't beat it I'm gonna we're gonna finish this too I'm gonna show you how we cut the grooves in it or the joints how we mag float it out how we broom it and that's coming right up here shortly. Darren's got about an eight foot screed he's using. He just that's a two by four magnesium screed. Those are really lightweight. You know, it's much easier screeding. The concrete doesn't seem to want to stick to something like that versus if you you guys are still using a two by four or something. I mean that those just get heavy the concrete sticks to them if you're doing this a lot you're gonna want to get some type of screed like this if you guys want to learn how to do this if you want to learn more about concrete how to pour it how to finish it you can check out my private membership the, the concrete underground I got a link for that down in the description below so depending on if you're on a laptop or if you're on a 
on a cell phone, you know, it's just that little down arrow gets you into the description, into the notes, and then all the links for all my stuff is down in there, whether it's the tools or my courses. So you can go down in there and check that out and join that. Now it took us, probably took us about 15 minutes to get this poured, really. Didn't really take very long. And then we went out and poured the garage. That'll be on a different video, but that probably took us 20 or 30 minutes to pour the garage. And this probably still had about another 30 minutes after that. So about an hour after we got done pouring this, we, we it was ready to start finishing. That's how fast... It was pretty firm too, but that's how fast this stuff sets up when the temperatures are right around freezing. And you got the right temperatures in the hot water, you got the right accelerators in there, and you you know, you kind of know how this stuff acts because you use it every day. That's that's how we feel anyway. So here we are about an hour later. Now Luke's Luke's measuring out for the joints. We're gonna put one about every eight feet, so that'll give us three of them in here. And then we'll cut them in. We'll cut them in using that tool I got in my left hand. That's a walk behind joiner. Now we could have cut them in earlier. I definitely could have came down, you know, 20 minutes earlier and cut these in with that tool. Um, but because this was so small, we just figured we'd wait and, and let it firm up pretty good before we cut them in so we could cut them in and mag it all at the same time. We know that we're going to mag float this out twice before we put the broom on it to get a fairly fine broom finish and with three of us here you know that's not going to take very much time at all so we just we let it firm up pretty good before we cut our joints and cut our edges in but you can definitely cut them in a lot earlier if you want to we like using a screed with you know that walk behind it just there's no uh, there's no room for air there. You're not gonna have any little any little swerves in the groove this way. Just makes them nice and straight. You can see Darren starting to mag float that out a little bit. It's, it's, it's definitely firm enough to mag the first time. Get the bull float lines out. Get all the paste brought to the surface. Get all the little voids filled in. If this were in the sun, it would be even better. But, you know, it's just that time of year. The sun doesn't get very high now. You'll be able to see how firm this is right here in a second because no I mean normally if this was if this was a half hour ago that thing would just sink right in on its own and I could just push it and pull it back through which which is kind of what it's made for quite honestly and then and then you let it set up a little bit more and you run it back through again to open up the joint a little bit when you when you cut a joint in pretty when the concrete's pretty loose you know the joint fills back in a little bit because of the concrete it just sags back in and then you just keep going back through it to open it up well when it's this firm and you cut it in it stays it keeps its shape in other words so you don't have to keep cutting it back in afterwards but you can see I got to put a little bit more down pressure on it just to get it cut in now if we had a lot of grooves to do and if we were cutting one the long way up the center we definitely would have got on this a lot earlier but Today we just made the decision to do it this way. This has got three quarter inch stone in it too, so I'm trying to trying to push down those rocks and push them to the side, make room for that joint in there. And obviously the firmer that is, the, the harder that is to do. But it wasn't too bad. You can see it took me, I don't know, a minute, minute and a half to do that maybe. So we'll get the other two cut in and we'll get this all floated out you'll see what it looks like after that
There, and that's as simple as it is to cut your joints in, basically right there. So, Luke and I will get this first mag in. Darren's cutting in the edges there with a small edger. We prefer just using the brass edger that has the curved edges on it. That's just the one we've always used, so we like that. I know a lot of you guys like the steel ones that leave like a smooth trowel finish, and that's perfectly fine too. It's just preference, really. I don't think there's any right or wrong. It's just whatever you like looks the best. So after we got it magged out that first time, we waited about a half hour, and we're going to get back on it here and just mag float it again real quick just to bring up some a little bit of a little bit more of a, a, a moisture paste instead of just brooming right over it. And it's a lot finer too now. And then we'll get the broom. You'll see how we'll drag the broom across it. We use that. That I got a two foot broom right there. You can see it laying to the right from Marshalltown. We get that from. It's a pretty. It's a pretty. I don't know. I, I call it a medium type broom. It's not real fine, fine, and but it's not coarse either. But it's pretty good for an exterior patio like this, a residential one. It's good for sidewalks where you can use it on pool decks. It's not too rough. So it's a pretty good all-around broom if you're looking for one. Now Luke got on there with some knee pads just because he didn't feel like kneeling on the concrete floor again. Um, it, the concrete floor is a little damp from the night before. It did rain the night before, so he didn't want to get his his knees all wet again. In some ways, this is a little bit easier on the back anyway. Now, first thing I'll do is I'll broom right over that joint so he can, he's going to put the finished tool mark on it while he's right there. Might as well get that done. I like dragging the broom slow too. I don't like it to chatter. I like keeping the angle low on it. And that just helps make it look nice and fine, makes everything look really consistent. I think for me, doing a broom finish is probably one of the easier finishes there are to do when it comes to concrete between you know learning how to hand trial doing stamping just any any other type of finish that you do probably this is going to be the easiest and the most forgiving too i mean it kind of hides a lot but you do want to make sure you hand float it or hand trial it really nice before you do that broom finish that will make a big difference we don't like seeing any any rocks or anything like that any small little pebbles rolling as we're brooming it we like just to broom the paste on the surface so we tend to let it get pretty firm before we broom it Looks pretty easy, doesn't it, guys? Who's done this before? Let me know down in the comments if you've ever done a broom finish patio before. Or if you're a DIYer and you're thinking of doing this, let me know that too down there. And then for you DIYers, you know, probably the best thing for you to do would be to jump in and get that course to make sure you know all the little tips and tricks and have all the right tools before you jump in and do something like this. The thing with concrete is I've found is you got one chance to do it right and after that you're fixing it if it's not right and concrete's really not that easy to fix too that's another whole art in itself
So that's how we do our broom finishes, guys. I mean, that's that's basically the same what we do for a driveway, a sidewalk, a patio, a pool deck, anything that we broom. This is the basic method we use as far as mag floating it out, grooving it, jointing it, edging it, putting the finish on it. So thanks for watching, guys. Come on back, and we'll see you on the next one.